Hey there, it's Laszlo Mercer, aka The Tinker Dad here. If you're a first time visitor to the channel, here we deal with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, regarding today's video, this one will be a really short tutorial where I will show you an alternative way to monitor your Proxmox nodes. And yeah, I know I always say it will be a short tutorial, but trust me, this time this will be really short and really easy. So if you're interested, keep on watching. So this is the default uh, UI of Proxmox. Well, some love it, some hate it, but it's kind of a usable uh, UI in overall. So it gives you some details and uh, an overview you can also uh, check the same for individual vms and containers and yeah in general in general it uh, does its job pretty well on the other hand this is net data so uh, a lot of people know net data it's uh, not a new piece of software and uh, actually it's uh, widely used for monitoring linux servers on the other hand, a lot of people don't know how well uh, NetData works on top of Proxmox. So just let's take a look. We have this overview dashboard. Then we can see that we have the containers. Then we have the VMs. Sadly, it doesn't uh, show you the names you have given in Proxmox, but it gives you the IDs. So unless you have a super high number of containers and VMs where, where IDs just become meaningless numbers, uh, you can use these. And uh, yeah, it gives you data about the individual containers and individual VMs. It gives you pretty much the same data, but uh, does it uh, with much more detail and uh, yeah, besides uh, monitoring the individual VMs and containers, when it comes to monitoring your Proxmox host as a whole, it gives you a lot more data. Also, it gives you information that is totally invisible on the Proxmox UI. So for example, if you are using ZFS as a storage, it will give you information about the cache used for ZFS. Okay, so the next question is uh, how you can install NetData on your Proxmox host, how you can use it there. So let's start with the fact that NetData is open source and that also means that it's free. So it has a GitHub page, you can check it out for the source code and for all the fancy information provided here. There's also an installation guide uh, with different, different methods, including Docker. Now. Uh, to be honest, this is not the best guide, but uh, interestingly enough, there's another one uh, hidden a little bit on uh, the NetData website. Now, this website will mention NetData Cloud a lot of times, but don't worry, NetData itself is not a cloud exclusive solution. NetData Cloud is more like a next layer of software built on top of NetData, but since we are using it locally, on our Proxmox server, you don't have to care about NetData Cloud right now. Anyway, the installation guide is here. It's quite short. I will put this link into the description. So if you check the guide itself, it has a section that tells you that, uh, that NetData has an automatic one-line installation script. And uh, there are a few options uh, for you to consider. So if you want automatic updates, by default it's enabled. You can untick this. And when you do so, uh, the command line changes here. The same applies to the other two options, like do you want a nightly or a stable release? I would go with uh, stable. So the default is nightly, uncheck for stable. By the way, I will have automatic updates enabled. Do you want to contribute anonymous uh, statistics? By default, this is enabled, but it's totally up to you. I will just untick it. And now, I have a slightly modified one-liner script here, so I will just copy it and go to my Proxmox host. In your Proxmox, you just go to the shell of the Proxmox installation, so not into the console of one of the VMs or containers, but into the shell of the Proxmox uh, node itself. And in the shell, you just paste this command. 
if for whatever reason it turns out that uh, your Proxmox installation doesn't have the wget command available, this command will help you out. It will just uh, install and enable wget for you. When I press enter, this will uh, start compiling and uh, building and whatnot. So it will take a couple of minutes. And if you net, if you have uh, NetData already installed, like I do, then it will just uh, do an update of the installation. Actually, for me, it instantly uh, completed because uh, it detected that it has the latest version and nothing to build. Well, that's it. Okay, so at this point, whether whether uh, the script actually did something for you or just uh, quit, like in my case, you will have the data up and running on Proxmox. And uh, you can access it with the IP address or host name of your Proxmox host and with this port number. So believe it or not, this is it. At this point, you can start using NetData to monitor your Proxmox installation. Okay, so far so good. So at this point, you are happily running NetData and you wonder what uh, if I have multiple instances like multiple Proxmox nodes or multiple Linux servers, um, what will happen then? I mean, do I have to have separate dashboards? And the answer is clearly no. And this is where a NetData Cloud comes into the picture. So this guide won't be about NetData Cloud, I just explain it in a few words. So NetData Cloud is basically a cloud-based aggregator service where you can uh, have all the data that is coming from your nodes uh, in a centralized place on a centralized dashboard. In that context, NetData developers refer to the node to the software we have just installed as NetData Agent, and NetData Cloud is the cloud solution itself. Now, if you want, you can experiment with it because it's free, and yeah, they say it can it will be forever free because uh, the pricing model is that uh, at some point in the future they will be uh, developing premium features. Point is, you have this way to uh, solve the problem of multiple Proxmox nodes. In case for whatever reason you don't prefer the idea of uh, storing your monitoring data in the cloud, you still have uh, some options to use net data. So you can uh, use one of those database exporters within net data to export data from uh, your nodes into a shared database. And on top of the database, you can use whatever aggregate uh, UI dashboard you have in mind. This can be a little bit tricky to set up and obviously you will uh, lose the ability to have the aggregate um, UI of NetData that you can see with NetData Cloud, but at least all your data will be stored locally. Also, another solution is to use a REST API provided by NetData. So this is not something you would want to do on a large scale, but uh, it can be an interesting tool to, for example, pull some of the data from your various Proxmox nodes or Linux servers and uh, display them wherever you uh, like them. So for example, in the past, I used uh, NetData's API to pull info about my ZFS disks and uh, I used uh, a REST uh, full sensor in Home Assistant to pull the data via this REST API and display it on a Lovelace dashboard. That was actually a pretty cool experiment. Anyway, point is, uh, you have quite a Swiss Army knife here with NetData and you have quite a few options. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you about NetData today. Uh, so I meant this video more like a quick start guide and, and an overview uh, without going too much into technical details. So this was easy, right? How do you like NetData so far? Or is it actually the first time you use NetData or have you used it before? If you have experience with NetData or use it to monitor your home system, feel free to share your story in the comments. As always, I'm eager to learn from others. 
anyway it's time to close the video now so thanks for watching it and um, yeah if you liked it give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet it helps me a lot and you will also be notified if i upload a new video so i hope to see you next time next week with a new one bye